Antioch, we are so glad to have you here today. We hope that today's message will lead you to truth and will be a blessing to your family. We want you to keep connected with us during service through likes, comments, and hearts. You can also share this video on your Facebook page. God bless you. Give a hand to our Lord for who He is. Hallelujah. We bring glory to His name. Come on, we can do better than that, church. Come on, He deserves praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Manantial family. So blessed to have you in the house of the Lord. So blessed to have you with us online. Somebody shout with me. Blessed by the best. That's who we are. That's what we believe. We know that in God, all things work for good. So today, bless the person that's next to you, the person that's behind you. So I'm glad you came to church today. Come on, look for somebody. Look for somebody. Say, so glad you decided to be here this morning. You look good this morning. You look good this morning. And after you do so, you may be seated. Welcome to the house of the Lord. What a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord this beautiful morning. I love Sunday. Come on, somebody. Anybody love Sunday? Yeah. Yes. You know, uh, I was uh, introduced to a song that I want to share with you for a little bit. Are you ready? Say, oh yeah. oh, yeah. I don't hear you say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I started hearing this. I'm not telling you, you know, that I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a follower. I'm just telling you I heard this song, and it kind of, you know, got me thinking. How many of you have gone to Chick-fil-A on Sunday? Come on, raise your hand. Anybody? Like, you've gone to Chick-fil-A, and then you get there, and it's like, man, there's no line. And then you get there, nobody's in, and you're like, oh, closed on Sunday. You're my Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I, was, I, went, I went Sunday to Chick-fil-A. And I get there, and, and I understood this song for the first time. You know, because honestly, you hear sometimes, and you're like, man, what's this? I don't really, it doesn't really make sense. Then I got something. Do you understand that Chick-fil-A is the number one restaurant in the world right now? And it's closed on Sundays. Say with me, Essential. Joshua 24, verse 15, the Word of God says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Come on, read this last part with me. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on. Read it out loud with me again. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Close your eyes with me. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you have chosen us to live in this time for this moment. I thank you that every person that's here, you know them by name. Holy Spirit, I pray that there will be a revelation of your call in their life today. I pray, Lord that you will use my lips, but that it will be your word. Lord, that we would have the wisdom to understand your word. God, anything that's not yours right now, in Jesus' name, we cancel it. We pray that your goodness and your love will bring the revelation and the knowledge of Christ. Even as we read your word, in Jesus' name, we all say, amen. amen. This week, we started something a little bit different called virtual learning. Come on, somebody. Anybody had a good time in virtual learning? Come on, raise your hand if you had a good time. Nobody had a good time. How many of you had virtual learning this week with your kids? Come on, let me see who I'm talking to, okay? If you didn't, if you don't have kids, you didn't have virtual learning, I'm pretty sure you saw posts of kids like, ah, right? Um, I heard, <laughs> I'm not going to say any name, but he's my nephew, Johan. He tells his, his, his mom, mom, the internet's not working. So the mom believes him. Come on, mom's in the house. How many, you know better. What happens when junior high kids tell you that something's not working? Usually they don't want to do anything. So the mom's like, okay, no problem. They take them to daycare. There, the, the internet works well there. Oh, no, mom, the internet was working. It was just something that was my computer. You know, I see parents that uh, uh, started talking to me and said, listen, pastor, I'm not a teacher. It's hard, it, it's hard for me to do first grade math. You know, it's hard for me to go back and do this, and I'm working, I'm doing all these things. It's so hard to this time. And then I have teachers, friends of mine that are like, man, I'm working triple time to get this working. We don't know, you know, all these changes that are happening, how are you doing? But I'll tell you a little bit of my story, you know. I wasn't, I was homeschooled in a certain way 
It was an ACE program. Some of you don't know what this is. Accelerated Christian Education. So you had to do your work by yourself. Now, let me ask you, those of you that are here, how many of you had to do your homework without your parents' help? I don't see your hands. How many of you had to do your homework? Some of you guys are like, oh, I wouldn't do my homework. Come on. You know, you had to do your homework. I, when I grew up, my mom would tell me, you will not go outside until you finish your homework. So I had to do my homework. And the grade I got was my grade. Now our kids get our grades. You know what I'm saying? Come on, it was my grade. So for me, what I'm seeing today is an opportunity. Somebody say opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to take back what the enemy has tried to steal for a long time. In this ACE program, you had to read the book and do your homework, the homework yourself. You couldn't ask anybody for help. You would go and check your grades. And if you got it wrong, guess what? You had to figure it out. And my mom will do something like this because the curriculum was in English. My mom will do something like this. Ay, mijo, pues, ¿cómo quieres que te ayude? If you don't understand, ¿cómo quieres que yo haga understand? You know, so there was literally times in which I would cry, oh, Lord, I get it. I don't get it, Mom. I'm trying so much, and it doesn't work. I'm not learning. I'm just not smart enough. And then my mom will say something like, ah, ah, you think you're not smart enough, eh? Yeah, you want to see what smart enough is? No te vas a parar hasta que acabes. Look at me. So with me, choices. Come on, I need you to wake up. Say choices. See, Joshua makes a choice here. He says, as for me and my house, I had to make a decision for myself to do my homework. Come on, parents that are here. I had to make a decision to learn so that I can get out of first grade when I was 11 years old. Since I didn't know how to speak English, they put me in first grade when I was, should have been in sixth grade. Sometimes you have to get uncomfortable so you can get to the place that God has for you. Amen. Say with me, essential. essential. I believe with all my heart that God's given us an opportunity to take back what the enemy has stolen. And I know we see it as more work. And I'm telling you, it is more work. And I know as we see it as a pandemic, but I'm here to tell you that you have the antidote. <laughs> His name is Jesus, and God's giving you keys today. Now, I want to talk about three keys. God's giving you keys today that can shift your family when you say, as for me and my house. Notice it doesn't say, as for me and my nation. Am I preaching to somebody today? Notice it doesn't say, as for me and my workplace. Come on, somebody say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Do you understand that it starts with you? It starts with me. And as we go through this transition of what God is taking us to higher, listen, to higher levels in which we start walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, we need to say no to the things that we need to say no to. We need to stop living on the easy, on the lazy, on what other people, stop cheating the homework from other people. You got to do the work. As for me in my house. We will serve the Lord. We're going to go into Ephesians chapter 5. If you have your Bible, I want you to open your Bible. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to read scripture. Verse 21. I'm going to start in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting to one another as the fear, in the fear of God. Listen to this. Submitting to one another. As I was doing a little bit of research on this, on the Greek word of submitting, you understand that the meaning here is submission, listen to this, of counsel. When was the last time you asked for counsel? I want you to get this. Look, look at me for a minute. There's things in which you're better than me because you have a gifting that God has given you. You understand that? There's a gift in you. There's purpose in you. Each one of you, as the body of Christ, you were called to be his hands and feet. You were called to be part of his purpose. If you understand that, say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I need you to get that in your spirit. They're submitting to one another. So I submit to you in the things that God has gifted you with because I know we're advancing the kingdom. Submitting to one another, I take your counsel. Submitting to one another. The gifts that God has given me are here to serve the body. The gifts are not for me. They're not for my benefit. They're for yours. Mm, you didn't hear me. If you have the gift of healing, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you have different gifts that God's given you, the gift is not for you to profit of it. The, the, the gift is for you to make sure that the other person gets healed. 
If you have the gift of leadership, it says for you to be diligent. So you have to use that gift for the good of the others. Now listen, as a wife, as a husband, as a child, as a youth, as youth, and wherever thing that you're doing at work, at home, in church, you're called and you are essential in this time. We got to submit to each other. Do you understand that? And then it says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Say it with me, order. Submit to God. Submit to each other. Wives, submit to your husband. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. He's the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be, their, uh, be to their own husbands in what? Wow, come on, man. Let's, let's, let's get excited here, okay? Come on. Uh, you, know why, you know why I love passages like this? Because they challenge us to get out of our comfort zone. In the Bible, you will never see the word feminism. In the Bible, you will never see machismo either. Submit one to another. What are you best at? Your job in submission is to make sure, uh, submitting to one another, is to make sure that the other person, you're covering the other person, you're giving counsel. Your job is to take counsel, ask for counsel, but the job of the person that's helping is to make sure that they're covering the other person. You're not good at this. Come on, how many of you know the weakness of your, of your wife or your husband? Come on, don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. How many of you know the weakness of your kids? And you're like, man, I got to cover them in this area. I got to protect them in, in this area. My job, submitting one to another, is to make sure that you become your best version of yourself. So because I love you, I cover you, I'm going to protect this right here. But it starts with communication. If you're taking down notes, take, write this down. Say, good communication. Look, I can tell you something and you can understand it completely different because you already have an agenda. <laughs> I can tell you something and it can mean completely something different to you because of the tone of voice I use. Am I right or not? See, when, when I came over from Juarez to El Paso, sixth grade, I had to learn to speak a new language. I didn't know how to speak English, so I get there, and they start giving instructions. The teacher gets there and says, listen, I want you guys to take out your uh, goal chart, is what they will call it, and you start writing down what you're going to do for the week. I'm listening, but I'm not understanding. And then they go, Pepito, do you understand? <laughs> is that a yes or a no? And I'm looking around, and everybody's looking at me, and I just go, do you understand? A little. Can I tell you something? It's time for you to make sure that you get, please listen to this, that you get exact instructions, precise instructions from the Word of God. So I had an awesome teacher that said, you want to learn to speak English? And I said, yes, I want to learn to speak English because I'm tired of people making fun of me. And she said, I want you to read. I go, I don't understand English. What do you mean I have to read? He says, listen, communication has three things. Language, learning a new language has three things. I need you to get this because some of you are learning a language from heaven and you're not understanding because you're not following this. It's you have to read, you have to write, and then you speak. Many times we want to speak first. I want to preach and you haven't read and you haven't written. You need to, you need, you, listen, there's, there's a process in the growth. The Bible says, make sure you don't put anybody in leadership that does not have seasoning, that does not have experience, that hasn't gone through something, that doesn't know the Word of God. Somebody that's knowledgeable of the Word of God. Don't tell me you're knowledgeable of the Word of God if you don't read the Word of God. How much do you read the Word of God? Oh, well, you know, I put a podcast this is, and I love pod, podcasting. Oh, I watched another preaching pastor. And I love that. But I need you to understand, there's revelation that will only happen when you open the Bible. And you know what happens? I will start reading. And I won't understand what I, what I was reading. Because I didn't speak English. All of a sudden, a word will come up. Wow. I know what that means. Some of you have struggled understanding the Bible as, as you read, as, as you go and say, Pastor, I've tried, but I understand. Say with me, keep reading. You gotta keep reading, you gotta keep reading, you gotta stay on the word. This is your daily bread. And there's gonna be seasons, there's gonna be times in which you're gonna feel that God's not speaking to you. But I'm here to tell you, God is always speaking, but it's time for you to spend time with Him. And you say, God, I'm here. I wanna listen to what you're telling me. And I, I'm gonna challenge you today. Speaking to a friend today, 
He's getting out of the hospital. He said, you know, I never thank God for my health more than now that I'm going through a health issue. And it just, what, what, what? I, I've never thanked God more for my health than now that I'm going through a health issue. See, because the truth is when we're not feeling healthy, we're praying, God, please heal us. God, please heal us. But when we're healthy, we're not saying, thank you, God, for health. Thank you, God, for health. Thank you, God, for health. And, and if, if you think about this, most of us are healthy. But what we're speaking about is what's sick. When was the last time you said, God, thank you? See, you get to that place, you get to that perspective when you start making things about God by reading the Word of God. I remember I sat down with a teacher and I said, listen, I'm trying to read. I'm trying. I'm really trying. This is, you know, but I don't get it. And I started crying. Have you ever cried out of um, anger? Come on, I, I, wanna, I want my real people in the house. Anybody cry when they get angry? Okay, we, get, we, we cry when we get angry because we feel that we, can't, we, 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 have no, uh, we have no control over. And then I love teachers like this, you know, teachers that say, what are you going to do about it? And I was like, what do you mean, what are we going to do about it? You're my teacher, you're supposed to help me. He says, I am helping you, what are you going to do about this? When the Bible says that should submit one to another, for the wives to submit, it says, as unto the Lord. I'm not submitting. I'm following the instruction. Look, I want you to get this. When Jesus is at the cross, Jesus is at the cross, they take away his clothes. I need you to picture this for a moment. They take away his robe. The Bible says that as they take it, they start seeing who's going to keep it because it was something that was valuable. At the moment that he's almost completely naked is a moment of shame. This is for somebody today. But when you're in the cross, when you're in the cross, you can't no, you no longer experience off, uh, you no longer experience shame. I want to look, when you're in the cross, how can I put it this way? Como se dice, no te ofendes. Uh, you don't get offended anymore. <laughs> With Christ, I am crucified. When I'm at the cross, when I get that communication of what he did for me, what you say, what people think about me, I'm no longer offended. I'm, I'm dead. I no longer live now. He lives in me. But I have to stay in the cross. I have to stay in him. I have to stay in the word. Communication. What is heaven speaking? I, I try to, I, I try to start, you know, making sense of, of what, of what he, I was, of what I was reading, but I couldn't get it. And all of a sudden, one word come out. I, I believe today, as you start reading the Bible, I want to challenge you. If you're not reading the Word of God, start reading the Gospels: Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. See who Jesus is. If you're going through some emotional turmoil, read Psalms. See how David goes. Oh my soul, praise the Lord. He's saying, Oh, everything I'm feeling, praise God. Don't let that control me. I want to invite you to read. If you're looking for God to give you instruction and daily life read the, the book of Romans read first Corinthians read the letters of Paul see what he's calling you to do if you need wisdom go ahead and read Proverbs and as you do so I promise you a new language is coming say with me essential it's essential that I get what he's speaking to me my family I want you to get this you as a wife, I'm talking to, to for a moment, I want to speak to marriages for a minute. You're the one that builds the house. You need to make sure that you submit to the authority that God has placed, not because you agree, but because you do it as unto the Lord. Everybody, everybody can agree until you do something that causes that person to change. I, I can submit until I disagree. <laughs> but true submission, and listen, I, I, I'm talking to marriages for just a moment because I see an attack of the enemy over marriages, and I need you to get this. God is calling you to live in the Word of God, and if you obey this, communication from heaven will start happening. Keeps I want us to keep reading Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to go on verse 25. Husbands, come on, husbands in the house. Man, I'm so tired of having women, you know, no misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm so tired of having more women in fire for God than men of God. I'm telling you as a pastor, man, 
I love you ladies, and I thank you for all you do, but I need some men to stand up, man. We need some men to stand up. I have so many people that say, where's the leadership in the church? And my, and my heart is, where are you at home? Where are you at church? Who are you at home? Who are you at church? Who are you when nobody else sees? Because the reason women have been taking those places is because men are not doing their job. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself to her. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be only and without blemish. Do you get that? Submitting one to another, covering. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, his wife loves himself. He who loves his wife loves himself. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she what? Respect her husband. Say it with me. Love and respect. Did you see that? The husband is to love and the wife is to respect there's been, there's been a shift in our society, and they told us that the moms, that the ladies are the ones that are supposed to love. But look, I grew up with my parents, okay? I grew up with my parents having defined roles. I know we don't like this. I'm going to get you uncomfortable, but that's okay. That's the word of God. And it has defined roles, and it says this. Now, I want you to get this. You're not more than me. I'm not, you're not more than me, and I'm not more than you. But God has gifted you, and you have to use the gifts that God has given you. And I've seen many people turn this around, and because of that, the man has lost his place. And there's no longer, when there's a fatherless generation, there will be a godless generation. So what happens is that they told us, and we heard this, and we said, I'm going to let this be a truth in my life. I have to be more as a woman. You're already more in Christ. I have to be more. I have to make sure that I do this. And then I, I, we, we see feminists become what they, what they hated. And then look at me, men in the house. Don't be saying, oh, I can't believe she doesn't. Submit to me. Submit to God first. You love her as God tells you to love her. She'll submit to you. I had this situation with my wife a couple of times. Come on, let's be real. And I was like, man, you got to submit to me. Don't you see what the word of God says? Come on, don't look at me like you haven't done this. Hey, you have to submit to me. Don't you see? You're not following God. And then, you know, my wife being as wise as she is, sacaba el sartén. She'll get that chancla. And she'll be like, if you would love me, like the Bible says, then I'll submit to you. The truth is I understood I had to go to the cross again. With Christ I am crucified. I don't have to win the argument. I have to love her above the argument. So when, when I understood this, that I, there's respect and there's love, then I understood that I was called to love. So look at me, men in the house. I'm trying to set you free today. You start hugging your kids. You start telling them, I love you. I'm proud of you. You were called to love. You start telling your wife how beautiful you are. Well, nobody taught me, Pastor. The Bible's teaching you today. I love you more than you know. I'm here for you. I'm supposed to show love. But, Pastor, I'm supposed to be macho, bro. Come on, man. I see you crying. The truth is, and I, I promise you, I really see women are stronger than men. Come on. Can you imagine men giving, chi giving childbirth? Nombre. Recently, I, you know, I told Anna, man, I, I, I think I, I need you to, I think I need you to give me an injection. <laughs> I'm from Juarez, I'm sorry. You know, I, I think you give me a shot. And she's a nurse and she's like, why? I just, you know, like, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I don't know. And let's just be on the safe side. Just give me a shot. I don't know. Come on, somebody. How many of you have thought you had COVID? You don't lie to me. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Come on, come on, come on, what's going on? I don't I just, every, every, ay, 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 mamma, morir. <laughs> and she's a nurse, right? And she's like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to give you a shot, you know, just to make sure we're here because we're Mexican. I'm sorry. This, this is our culture. It's who we are. Why are you getting a shot for? I don't know. I'm just getting a 
church. Why? Because I, just because, man, I, I, everything hurt. So she shows me the shot. And I'm like, ay, 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 no, mi amor, no, mi amor, mejor no. Have you seen the epidural ladies get? Come on, man. Can you imagine taking that? I pass out, the boy. La sangre de Cristo. Respect. You know who would discipline me? My mom. Now, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We do this together. We're one. I'm talking to marriages just for a minute, but stay with me. But the one that edifies the house is the mom. Your job as a wife is you set the rules at the home so when the husband comes, he can love. And if you both work, you both come in agreement and you say, listen, it's not, I style papa, now you correct him. No, 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 I need you to get this. This is Bible, this is, you, you show respect. And husbands, I know we say, yeah, yeah, she has to do that, but I'm telling you, we have the hardest part to do. You have to love like Christ loved. That means you're going to get hurt. <laughs> that means they will not honor you, but you still love. That means you will not see a piece of your paycheck, but you still love. Come on, somebody say, it's my time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna miss it. See, I understood this, what's happening right now. It's an opportunity. I know many of you guys are like, man, this is hard work, and it is hard work, but God's putting them right back in you. God's putting them right there on the table at your house, and you say, I don't have time. Turning the heart of the children to the parents and the parents to the children. See, after I get the communication, I need to set specific goals. Set goals. Goal setting. Uh, one of my, my favorite time of the year is when Anna and I get to celebrate our anniversary. In our anniversary, we usually go out of town. We go to different places, you know, two, three days, you know, and just go and dream again, dream together. We've been doing this for several years. I love spending time with her. We go and we start setting dreams. What's the dream for this year? What's God speaking? We read the word of God. Where's God taking us? We start talking about what we want for our kids, what we want for our house. We started doing this years ago. We just, we, we just, it's something that I, I want to encourage you. We don't just do goal setting. We don't just put, you know, resolutions at the beginning of the year. You need to do this every month. You need to do this every week. You need to keep this daily. So I'm talking with her. Listen, you want to live in passionate love with your husband and your wife. I see you. You know what you need to do? Dream together. So when we dream together, we admire each other. The problem is you have your own dreams and she has your own dreams. We're not communicating. We don't have this. Now, I want to get this. This is for everybody. In your life, you need to set goals. You need to set dreams. What is it that God's calling you to do? You're gifted, man. You have purpose, and the enemy will try. I need you to get this, okay? He'll try to stop your walk because he knows the people you're going to reach. So we dream together, and it's like, okay, what are we going to do? We were, we were 20 years old, and we said at 22, we're going to buy our house. Guess, guess what happened at 22? Now, I want you to get this. The Bible says that we get the horse ready for battle, but he's the one that gives victory. But who gets the horse ready? So then we said, at 25, you know, we want to have a baby. And I was fine with one baby. Come on, how many of you have had babies? And after like the first month, you're like, oh, that's it. No more babies for me. After the first day. And then we started seeing Bella playing by herself, calling little, uh, you know, teddy bears names. And I was like, uh, she needs a friend. And we said, you know what? By this age, you want to pay off the house. Listen. If you can learn to manage your time, you can learn to manage your money. But you have to understand that you will not be 20 forever. And you need to pray as David prayed. Teach us to number our days so you can know what to do at 30. You can do, know what to do at 40. You can learn what to do at 50. The problem is at 60, you want to do the things that you should have done at 20. And then at 70, you're feeling guilty for the things you didn't do when you were 40. Say with me, start today. You have to set goals. I have to have communication with heaven. But see, I have to learn to read and I have to learn to write. I know, Pastor, I don't like to go to school. I know me neither, but I'm challenging you here today. It's essential that you understand the time that we're living in, that you don't just say, I'm going to let things happen, and you start saying, God, you have me here for a purpose. I'm going to write down. And I can tell you something. Look, people will not take risks because they're afraid of failures, and they become failures anyway. 
because you attract <laughs> you attract who you are and if you're always afraid the people around you are so key and you need to understand as you're essential as a husband here's my role and I'm gonna take a role I'm standing on the rock and what I'm supposed to do is make way for my family they'll be greater than me so therefore I write down here are the goals I have listen you're 35 you're 45 where are you gonna be at 60 you're 65 you're 70 where are you gonna be at 80 and can I tell you something look at me for a minute Jesus will always use people that were old because they would not depend on themselves anymore they would not say, it's my strength. I don't want to wait till that time. I want to say today, God, I can't do anything unless you're with me. But everything I do is for you, and I'm going to give it all I have. So let me set goals. Okay, how many of you this, this week had your family kind of doing, some of you guys, I posted it, I saw it, and then out of a sudden, the computer froze. Anybody? The internet's not working, Amen. It froze. Can I tell you, many times in our life, things like this happen. We have goals and we have things that we have to do, Alex. But all of a sudden, it's frozen and you're like, when is this going to change? Come on, Raul. Come on, Jacob. I see you. When is this going to change? How come it's frozen? Can I tell you something? You got to take the reconnection. <laughs> you got to go back to that place in which you say, it's time for a reset. And I believe God's calling us specifically on resets so that as we set our goals, it's no longer about us. If all, I th if all I'm doing right now is making money, if all I'm doing is just making sure that I'm paying the bills, I'm missing God's best. I want to finish with this. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, come on, children that are here. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is what? Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up. Bring them up. I want to call this generation. I want to I invite you, youth that are here, rise up. Hey, Tito, Tito, God called you before you were born. Rise up. Rise up. I love how he said, hey, you too. <laughs> Look at me. There's a grace over you, a favor over you. Beto Albert, you better not quit. You better not quit. I want you to get, I know, I know you're not a quit, but I need you to understand. You better not quit pushing him to more. Tito, look at me, look at me. There's things that have been in your heart, even as a child, that you say, Dad, we need to help that person. You can say, oh, and I know, listen, the enemy has been trying to get, your, get you off focus. So today, I want to pray for you. Is that okay? Close your eyes where you are. I want to pray for both of you. God, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will give their life fully to you at this age. Lord, I pray that they will be they will be confident. God, I pray that Jesus will be Lord of their life. Lord, I cancel anything the enemy has tried to send. I thank you for health over their life. I thank you that there's no fear in them. I thank you, God, that even the things that sometimes at night have attacked them are gone now in Jesus' name. I, Lord, I thank you that there's a light that shines so bright as they walk and people will see your glory through them in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, give a hand to the Lord if you believe that. Come on. When was the last time you grabbed your child and you blessed them? When was the last time you called greatness? Can I call greatness out of you? Bro, you will not stop now. You feel frozen. You feel like that screen stays there. You will not stay there. There's, there's things in your past that sometimes hinder. I want you to see a future. And there's people that have left that are going to come back and they're going to need you to help them. And you think, I need them to help me. You're gonna, they're going to need you to help them. Rise up today. And there's, there's greatness. There's greatness. Listen, church. Listen, church. More than ever, the body of Christ needs to do what they're called to do. I need to learn to read, to get on the word. I need to learn to write. What is he saying? What does he want me to do? The Bible says he puts in us the will and desire to do. I don't know if it's God. He puts in us the will and desire to do as you're connected to him. And
and I have to understand, and I want to finish with this, I just said as parents that we are to be accountable one to another. If you're not accountable, you'll suffer less. Loss. I need somebody to be taking care of what I'm doing. You know why people fall into corruption? You know why people fall into sin? Because nobody, they don't give an account to anybody, not even to God. There's no fear of God, but when you're, you're accountable to your wife, you're accountable to your husband. You know when my situation changed in my finances when I became accountable to my wife? You know when my situation changed as a teenager when I became accountable to my parents and I say, look, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm struggling with. You know when, when my authority changed in the spirit when I became accountable to my pastor and I said, here, this is, what I, this is what's happening in my life. You have to be accountable. I have to learn to communicate. Oh, no, I can do this on my own. Okay, go ahead and do it. That's not what the Bible says. Oh, well, I don't need to set dreams. I don't need to set goals. It's just, well, I'm just, you know, I'm good where I'm at. I need you to understand this. Stop robbing the word. And it says, stop robbing the church. Stop robbing the body of your gift. Amen. And start doing what God's calling you to do. And become accountable one to another. It's for your protection. Submitting one to another. Protecting one another. So that we can get to that place in which we can say, Joshua 24, 15. As for me... In my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Will you stand with me today? I'm learning to read. I'm starting to write some English. In three months, I went from first grade to third grade. I'm feeling good. I should be in sixth grade, but I'm in third grade. And I try to speak ready to speak. I already read. I already wrote. Now I'm going to start speaking English. But I speak English and I think in Spanish. <laughs> so I can't say what I want, what I should say because in Spanish you put the subject first and then the adjective. So you say el gato blanco. Right? So I'm translating it in English and I say the cat white. You should be speaking in tongues. You should be speaking heaven. But you're trying to translate it to the thought process that you had before. And you're trying to judge what you saw in other people in this place. And this is not the place for you to do that. This is the place. I'm talking in this season. Something you passed in that season. This season, you should be speaking already as what heaven is saying. But you're still thinking as what you were before. So therefore, you cannot speak who you are now. Come on, somebody. You continue to see what God has happened in your experiences before. So you cannot believe that God can still heal today. But Alex just saw last week. God healed him from diabetes. He couldn't speak. He couldn't even feel his, his foot. Right? You were telling me it hurt all the time for years. And now before we even prayed, God healed him. Why? Because there's an alignment to what heaven says. And you speak that. And don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This is not about declaring and just saying. This is about believing from the inside out and knowing that God is greater than this COVID. Knowing that God is greater than your financial, than your financial problems. Knowing that God is greater. So I can think in Spanish and speak in English. Always, because I saw that pastor do that. Well, you're not there anymore. If you will honor. Always, because I saw this with my dad. You don't know. Well, you, he's not there anymore. Your job is to honor them. Always, because I see this and I see, no. So I had to change my thinking and started thinking. I used to struggle with this because I, I, I learned Spanish first. I still struggle with this because my flesh but now I'm gonna live in the spirit close your eyes with me I say yes my life is yours when you call if you can put your hand in your heart church close your eyes with me let's pray together I want to pray for several of the youth that are here but I want to pray for Chris for a moment God I pray that the decision will be made clear of what he should study and what he should do 
that, uh, that confusion in his mind, that thought process will be changed. God, I pray you conform him to the image of Christ. Chris, you'll have specific money coming in for the school. God, I pray for faith to arise. You'll have specific things lined up. You will not waste a season. You will not waste a semester. God will tell you what you need to do to the, turn to the left and turn to the right. But here's the challenge. Would you follow Christ? Would you follow Christ? I want to speak to the youth that's here. The challenge is to go to the cross and say, with Christ I am crucified. I no longer live. If today you're ready to do that, and maybe not just the youth, but there's people here that need to say that. I, I no longer want to live my life. I want to live his life, what he has for me. There where you are, there'll be somebody today that says, I need to, I need to start new. Raise your hand where you are. If you close your eyes with me. I know there's people here that um, I want to challenge you to be courageous today. If you would do that with me, raise your hand up high. There's some people that have to start warring in the spirit and start using the heavenly language. It's a new language that God has given you to put on hold. And this is, how, this is how we win our battles, by speaking heaven, by speaking his word. As you have your hand raised, church, I want us, I want us to pray this together. Would you pray with me? Let's all pray this together. Would you say, God, today I give you my life. I repent from my sin. Jesus, be Lord. Thank you that in you I have new life. Amen. Man, there's people that are experiencing freedom right now. Some of you need to remember where it is to find your first love. God, I pray for every family that's here. God, I pray that we would align with heaven. That we would align with your word. That we would align with your truth. Lord, I thank you that uh, you are regenerating this generation. I thank you that you chose us to live this time. You could, have, you could have put anybody else, but you put us and you put your church. I thank you, God, that you're calling us essential. I pray the power of your Holy Spirit will empower so that husbands, wives, the family, God, will rise up to be the church. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, if you believe that God's best is for you, I want you to say, oh yeah! oh yeah! And give a hand to the Lord for who He is. Love you. More than ever, it is so important to realize that God has equipped us for His purposes here on earth. That is to say, you are essential. Remember that if you need prayer, you can message us on our Facebook page. You can also follow us on Instagram and YouTube. God bless you.